Cool guys, uh, so we'll just get started um, So you all know um, First of all guys, thanks for all of you for coming Those of you who are course representatives um, You'll be able to get that like whole page signed off uh, at the end Like this will be finished by 7 um, at the latest um, and, and, and then we'll move on to, to election results um, But so you know what this is, this is the biannual student conference uh, That's your opportunity to find out uh, what your union's been up to What we've been doing uh, for you on your behalf um, and for you to ask any questions you've got about it, anything you'd like to change, uh, anything you think we should have been focusing on that we haven't. So uh, write down any questions you have and there'll be a 20 minute slot to, to ask any questions you've got towards the end. Um, but before that I think we'll kick off with just some introductions because I'm aware you might not know all of us. So perhaps we'll start with Usman to the far left. So good evening everyone, I'm Usman Mahmood, I'm a second year, I'm a second year Vice President of Cavendish. Hi guys, I'm Salsible, I'm the first year Vice President of Marlborough. And I'm Jim, it's my first year as President. I'm Lauren Woff, I'm the Vice President for Regents and LTS, and it's my first year. Um, it's my first year, my name's Otis, and I'm the Vice President of the campus you're on right now, so Harrow. <laughs> um, I'm Andy Smith, I'm Chief Exec, so I'm the senior member of staff that reports directly to the trustee board, and it's my fourth year. Cool guys. Um, and so just to get an idea of format, first of all, what we're going to go through is what we've been doing individually as SABs. Um, so we'll be going through our reports, which we've been publishing every month uh, since we came into office in July. Um, after that, we'll be going into the goals of UWSU. Um, there's four main goals. So we'll be going through them in turn to explain what progress we made towards them. Um, and then we will be opening up um, two questions um, and policies, which you can then excuse me, and ask lots of questions about. Um, so, uh, as first off, yeah, it starts with myself, um, this is what I've been done. So, I was elected on the manifesto, which primarily pledged to make the SU more transparent, more accountable to you guys as members, so you've got a better idea of what it's actually doing, um, and hopefully that it's more responsive to what you're doing. So, in light of that, I've done quite a few things. Uh, one thing we've created is a complaints process, so you can fill in the form and complain about any issue you've got, and you'll get a response to that uh, within hopefully 24 hours, but within three days. If not, that's monitored by myself and Andy Smith, the chief ex executive, so you can complain anonymously as well if you want to. So there's that direct route. But beyond that, we've got monthly reports, which we're now releasing. Um, uh, yeah, and, and the main things. Um, with regard to accountability, um, we now have a student voice and democracy coordinator um, who is trying to like, build leadership within students, so making the elections better, more transparent, but also building course representatives, so we have more of them, um, which hopefully mean more course-based societies, which is then better, because every course then has a community, um, which is moving forward on that. With regard to employability, um, I've started my plans for employability month, which is next February, uh, and that's all about trying to get alumni back to the university to find out where people are who were perhaps here five, ten years ago, what hurdles they faced, what they wish they'd done at university to overcome some challenges, um, and hopefully to inspire us to perhaps do the same, overcome some hurdles before it's too late, so we get a three-year uh, run-up uh, space, if you like, um, to progress and then become as employable as possible. Um, with the external speaker process, we now have society's charter, so the idea is that societies uh, should run events which uh, are conducive to um, the student community here. Um, that doesn't mean we don't want controversial debates, we love that, the more of that the better, but it's about making sure it's in a debate setting which everyone can engage with um, and, and, and where a fair exchange of ideas uh, happens. Um, and finally, value for money. Uh, 99 pence coffee, uh, filter coffee was something I wanted Aramark uh, to offer, they're the... Uh, caterers at the university has a contract with for uh, five years and coming up for extension next year for a further two um, and they're going to trial 99 pence filter coffee from January for, for two or three weeks, see how that impacts on their sales and if it's effective we can make, then make a business case that they should roll that out forever so if you want 99 pence filter coffee just buy lots of that in January and then we'll, we'll smash the business case and uh, get that rolled out so um, yeah I mean I think that's a fair summary um, the only other thing I can say is we sit on lots of committees. Um, so I've been sitting on the Court of Governors, which is the highest uh, governing body of the university, influences all their policy and everything they do. There's also Academic Council. Uh, they decide things like which courses to close, if they want to open new courses, uh, where money should be spent. Um, so going forward, I think uh, what, what one of the next things that I'm going to have to try to push for uh, is more transparency with where our £9,000 fees go um, and, and where that's spent and if that's being spent in a way we're happy with. Um, so that's me, and I would like to pass it over to Sousabil. Um Hi, guys. Um, number one on my manifesto point was to enhance disability services. Um, I've done that through um, a, the society should be launching soon called Unique. It's a disabled student society, and um, the whole aim for that is to create a community within Westminster where people feel safe and welcomed and um, fall into place. Like, if you're a student that hasn't even claimed their disability yet, 
there's obviously another student that has, and then they can help you with through the process. Um, so that's a main thing that I've done this so far. Another thing is to prioritise the lift usage. So um, in Marlebone, there is a lecture theatre that holds the main modules there, and we have four students on wheelchairs that go to there, but they miss their lectures. So um, hopefully they'll be building an extra lift that goes straight up to the Hog Lecture Theatre. Um, a social space in Marlebone is crucial, so we really need one. Um, what, um, I've lobbied for it, and I'm waiting for the faculty to feed back to me from this, and the space manager to let me know that we're going to get the green lights and go ahead with it. Um, I've also um, got done the tutor, um, personal tutor consistency. So, so if you're a first-year student, um, you have a module... So this is for WBS, by the way. Sorry if it doesn't account to you. Um, so we have a personal tutor that you get allocated in your first year of university and you do an hour session with them in your first year. But then in your second year and your third year, you've got, like, you don't have sessions with them. So what we're doing is... Um, if you have a change of circumstances, so if you're from a full-time to a part-time module retriever, you'll be allocated the same personal tutor instead of having a different one each time you change your circumstances. So that policy's been put through and improved. Um, the architecture and the built environment section of the university has refurbished and has officially opened, uh, which is great. And um, I'm doing an anti-bullying campaign in February, so watch out for that. Um, it does happen, unfortunately, at university. Um, another thing that's not on my manifesto, but I've done, it's Let's Go. I don't know if you've heard um, of Let's Go. It's an initiative that uh, runs events that are non-alcoholic and non-nightlife-driven. Um, so students have an opportunity to go to events like... Uh, my first event was paintballing for freshers, which around 50 students attended. And we recently went to Thorpe Park, um, also another 50 students attended, um, there, there is one coming up soon for Christmas and end of term. Um, do get involved with Let's Go and give me ideas of what other events you want. So it's based on what you want, and then I book it and offer you a good ticket price. Um, another thing I was behind is um, in our faculties in Westminster, um, we have a new position for the academic societies, and we've pushed out for four extra academic societies within the Marlborough campus, which will help my manifesto points of more student living, uh, more student-driven events. Um, that's about it. I don't want to go on too long because I've got the longest manifesto out of all five of them. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, we'll pass over to Opus. So, uh, just as everybody else is, uh, my manifesto is on the UWSU website, so that's uwsu.com. And you can find all of ours there and all of our reports as well. Um, so, lots of things to be, to be getting on with. Uh, first of all, I've ensured this year to make sure that the, the office isn't as uh, intimidating. Um, our doors are always open, um, so no matter what time you come, if we have a receptionist there and the office is open, not so like 6 a.m. in the morning, but um, the, the doors are always open. Um, that is until last week when our heaters inside the office broke and now we have external heaters. So, um, But until last week when the heating was okay, uh, the doors have always been open. That's brilliant. Um, we've ensured uh, that it's, it's always staffed during the, the hours that we say it is, um, which last year there was uh, a few issues with that, but... Obviously, that's a quote now. Um, we brought the, the SU into the main social space. So in the forum, we now have got a, a, a lovely cart, um, which obviously is, uh, is being staffed um, during the lunch hour. See the by myself, and now you can hear me. Great. Um, uh, so so that was, that's a big win as well. So bringing out uh, what we're doing into the social space. Um, also created a sustainability campaign. Uh, it's called Keen to be Green. If you haven't seen the video, then go on YouTube and, and have a look at it. Um, and that, that instantly got a, a lot of views and a lot of uh, people interested. So we now have a focus group, um, and we're going to be working on uh, four main projects in the future. Uh, they are to do with sustainable foods and food waste, uh, renewable energy sources, so we're looking into solar potentially, um, unnecessary waste production, and then looking into divest from using fossil fuels and looking where to reinvest. Um, and we've also, my, my biggest uh, point on my manifesto, uh, I've just got confirmed a trial for, um, so we're going to trial in January some studios or workspaces being open for 24 hours, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, but there's still so much more to do on that because that is just a trial. Um, so if you're already helping me out and getting involved, then please don't stop. We, we need to keep going and keep going. 
Um, other projects that are going to be doing in the future, we're hoping to have regular gigs in this space. So the loft will have um, gigs here every two two weeks, maybe three weeks. Um, and and then yeah, again. Oh, and uh, one other thing to look out for actually before Christmas. Um, I'm going to trial the shop for 24 hours. Um, so obviously a lot of people have deadlines before Christmas. Um, I'm going to sit in the shop overnight for a couple of days just to trial to see if it works. Um, and if it does, then potentially we could open it up for, for 24 hours during deadline times. So um, if you specifically have a deadline um, and you're from the Harry campus, let me know when it is and when the best days would be for this. Um, because then hopefully, if, like, like Jim's coffee idea, if uh, we get enough tick boxes, enough money coming to the shop, then we'll have to open it up. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. And next over to Lauren. Um, so the big thing that kind of brought together, sorry, <clears throat> um, all of my manifesto was about trying to create a sense of community, um, starting off on the Regents campus, but as well throughout the whole university, because we are four campuses. Um, so the first thing that I've done to kind of start that is, over the course of November, I ran We Are Westminster Month. Um, it's been on all of the campuses. It's spent a week in Marlborough, and then Harrow, then Cavendish, and then Regents. Um, and the whole aim of the month is about understanding each other's diversity and celebrating how diverse of a university we actually are, um, and that you can learn so much from being a diverse university. So that was the main aim of that month. Um, it's obviously something as well that can't just stop at a month. It's not done. It's about continuing it throughout the year and also progressing from more celebration events to more kind of discussion and debate-based events from that. Um, and part of We Are Westminster as well was electing liberation officers. So that's great that we're electing them tonight. Um, so as well, my manifesto was about uh, having January exams that's been passed and that will happen in the year 16, 17. So that's when January exams will start. Um, creating more of a sense of community on the Regents campus, we have revamped the old gym and the deep end. So there's now a ping pong table in there and a pool table in the old gym. Um, and instead of being kind of half silent study and half uh, social space, it's just completely social space now. And there's a silent study area that's been opened on the upper ground floor. And the deep end is now for student-based events only, which is something that we don't have in Central. We don't have a space like the loft until the deep end. Um, so that's got a stage, and it's very flexible, so any societies or students or course reps as a group can use that space to run any socials or events that you want to run. Um, so other things that I'm working on, um, I'm looking at doing a weekly events boards on, you know, the little newspaper bins that are outside the SU offices? So hopefully we can have something that's really interactive telling you when sports games are on, which societies are meeting on your campus that week, and big events that are going on, so that there's like a one-stop place just while you're in university to have a look at. Um, I also want to do course-based socials, so I have my first meeting with course reps um, next week, and we'll be able to start getting the ball rolling on that. Um, and I also want to create a sense of community between the societies and the sports teams and get them supporting each other a lot more. Um, so we had our residential at the beginning of the year, but also want to do a residential catch-up in January and start in planning that for them so that we can get them connected again and ask them how do you create that community with their input. Um, and I also want to look at the LTS library and making that space work as a, um, as a group study space. So if anybody has any feedback on that that they want to give me, um, it'd be much appreciated. <laughs> and finishing off with Osman. Great. Hi, guys. Um, so my manifesto was focusing around employability, um, a social space for Cavendish, and general course issues that I've kind of sort of discovered. Um, along with kind of on-campus facilities. So from September... Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Sansa. <laughs> um, so, so far, it's been a good year. Um, kind of focusing, focusing on employability, um, working with Jim, um, with the alumni team and the Creative Development Centre, on um, myself and Jim implementing a, an employability month in February. So that'll be across all campuses. Um, so you can get that experience and have that understanding of kind of getting you ready for the world, the sort of scary world, which is the life after university. Um, also, the, my big win is the social space at Cavendish. Unfortunately, um, really lacked a social space at Cavendish. It wasn't really a great vibe because didn't, students didn't really have anywhere to sort of just chill out on, really. Um, so we created that, which has really changed the campus massively. I think people are kind of getting, kind of getting more involved with each other from different courses and different courses. They're kind of just getting involved naturally. 
Um, society is using that space as, as for society events. Um, we've kind of made that a student-only space, so if, if any of us wants to book it, they have to come to the student union to, um, if they want to use it. So it's actually solely student space at the moment, which is great. Um, we've um, around employability. We've we've actually hired over forty um, part-time staff, student staff. That's sort of the biggest we've ever done um, in the students' union. Um, generally improving lab- library services around issues that are faced about being too noisy, and I think with the social space, it's kind of combated that. Um, also, with the three-week deadline, it's just kind of it's in place within the university um, bylaws, but it's just getting departments to. Um, adhere to that and finding departments that do have do that and just following best practice from other departments that we're implementing them at Cavendish. Um, another win was actually, um, so if you're a Cavendish student, can I can I get a wave or a hi? Cavendish students? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, thank you. Lovely to see you all. So if you're a Cavendish student, um, you all get free iPads um, to help you study. So that was implemented across... <laughs> if you're first and second... If you're first and second, second yeah, years. Sorry, second and third year. Sorry, Daniel. Second and third year, I believe. So um, that's... Sorry, other campuses, but that's worked really well. It's kind of really good. Um, worked really well for some of you. <laughs> and some of you may not... <laughs> we yeah. haven't funded that, just, just so... <laughs> yeah. no, that, um, no, that was um, a partnership within, within the university. I sat on a, a board that sort of initiated that. Um, so working on that, I did a Black History Month as well, which was really, really good, really well attended. I was, I was shocked because I had students from Harrow come down to Cavendish. That's unheard of when you speak to Harrow students, they don't know where Cavendish is, so that was quite nice to um, from them down. And it was just really promotion on, on issues around Black History Month and, the, and just working around promotion and really understanding um, that sort of thing. Future projects including more stuff around employability, video content that can sort of, you can kind of take away and really use. Um, and we're doing some work on Islamophobia, which is a really prevalent issue at the moment. Unfortunately, we're seeing it in the news, and we're seeing our students getting affected by it. Um, so that's something that, we, that I'm working on with South Sabel, and that's something that I kind of want to implement for second semester. So, thank you. Thanks very much. And that brings us uh, onto the goals of the union, which uh, um, we'll, we'll try to go, th- go through without uh, boring you too much. Um, but basically, we have a strategic plan, um, which is in place. It's something we inherited, but it's something that is reviewed every year. Um, and I'm just going to summarise it about the past year, really. Um, so we have the following mission. This is why we have a union. Um, it's every member will see a student's union that is devoted to ensuring they achieve their educational aims, look after their welfare, and positively impact on their overall university experience. So with regards to you guys seeing us as relevant, in the past year we've seen ups and downs, um, but hopefully more ups than downs. So we've been working with the Charity Commission and independent panel um, to improve uh, our external speech process in general and, and, and our protections for students. Um, but we've got more societies and sports teams than ever before, um, which basically means that almost th- more than 300 events were put on uh, in the last year just by them, um, which is excellent. Uh, South has launched Let's Go, uh, as you heard from her report, which is awesome. Uh, we've seen us go paintballing with Fort Park, amongst other things. Um, which is brilliant. Um, we've teamed up with Wicked Student Nights. We're now running all of our events, um, which is which is quite good. So that's all like more freshers events than ever before. Uh, cheaper prices to our freshers finale, for example, um, which is positive. But there's work to do. So that's the first time we've reviewed how freshers went, and we're looking to improve that going forward. 190 fans. You've all been excellent. Who's a fan here? Wave. You're a fan. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you guys have been awesome. Um, we've got 6,600 people who came to Freshers uh, and joined society, sports and student media. Uh, as a SAB team, we spoke to 6,500 students uh, through induction talks, um, which was quite a whistle-stop two-week uh, period for all of us. Uh, and our student media has been going strength to strength. The QH is now online. Uh, Smoke Radio won the student radio station of the year. Which is <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, so shout out to them. Um, but we're also <coughs> much more active in uh, directly communicating with you guys. So we've got, for example, our bi-weekly uh, emails, we've got wall planners, the goodie bags. Uh, all first years were sent a letter um, from myself, but on behalf of the whole SU, so building in other SAB's aims as well. Um, you can now access welfare support through the union at every single campus, which last year led to 200 students doing exactly that, and that directly stopped 25 students from dropping out of their course, uh, which is brilliant, which meant that they uh, were able to continue with their degrees. Uh, and course reps, who may, how many of you are course reps here? Put your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you guys as well. So, 
Um, you've, you've been awesome. We've had more people than ever attend workshops. It's been more kitted out. Over 400 course reps um, have, have, now, have now been trained, which is, is more than ever before. So hopefully that will lead to more changes in courses with more people listening to what students want and what's rubbish uh, in courses. Um, but as a unit, you know, we're here for students, uh, run by students, and we have 84 student members of staff, um, which is great, as, as, as Osman Os Os mentioned. Um, but for anyone else who wants a job, we're recruiting again next March. Um, but yeah, but I'll pass over to Otis to chat about our, one of our goals. Uh, first of all, it really looks like we're sponsored by Tornado. Um, we're not. Okay. Um, so we have four main goals um, at the, the union. And uh, the first goal is we as a students' union aim to be relevant to all of our members. Um, the university this year gave us access to... Um, everybody's data so we can basically email you and get in touch and tell you what we have to offer and what we have uh, going on um, and we're trying not to bombard you um, because I know the university does that already and it's probably quite frustrating um, but it's basically to make sure that you know what we're doing and you can get involved um, we now have uh, a member of staff called Medea and um, she works to create more course based societies um, which essentially is a great way to connect with one another and, and get skills from other people's courses, if you like. Um, as Jim said, we have lots of course reps. Thanks for coming. Um, and I've got written down exactly what Jim said, but you've been to, to more uh, of these inductions and these workshops, so that's brilliant. Thank you very much again. Um, alongside Let's Go, we've also got Give It A Go, which is... Uh, a sports initiative where you can come along for like a one-off session um, and get involved with a sport that maybe you hadn't thought about before. Um, so we had archery a few weeks ago and tomorrow, so this is a bit of a, a plug, but uh, tomorrow we've got um, rock climbing and that's between 12.30 and 4 and then uh, 3.45 and 5.15. So they're the two different sessions. Um, so if you want to get involved, then please let us know. Uh, the SABs, presidents, captains, student media managers um, have had more training than ever, uh, giving all of you guys and us uh, more knowledge so we can do our jobs properly and we can have a better union. Um, we've now got goaling, which is what we've just started this year. It's where every single week we go out onto one campus as a team and we go, go out and listen or go out and learn. That's what goal stands for. Um, and we basically hear what you guys want us to be doing or what we should be doing better and uh, we make changes that way. Um, we're also uh, making ourselves more visible this year. So with the social space in Cavendish and the office there, that's brilliant. Uh, we've got the car in Harrow, um, Regents and Marlebone. Uh, catch up? Um, no, no, I'm joking. Um, but staff this year are out and about, I think, way more than last year. So we, we've all branded clothes. We've all got branded clothes like this. Um, and we have loads of different clothing, so it's not like wearing the same stuff every day, which some people do ask me. No, I don't. Um, but if all of our uh, uniform is smelly, then we do wear a badge like, like this. Good. That was lucky. Um, so, yeah, we're out here. We're basically saying, look, we're here. Come and speak to us. And we're doing that even more than ever. Um, so this year, hopefully, if you've had any issues, you've been able to approach us and you've seen us. Um, and you guys are all here, so that's brilliant. So, Oh, and we also have uh, a brand new website, which is a lot quicker, because last year it was slow as, as ever, and, um, <laughs> and it, it's much, much quicker, and it's much easier to use. We've got a great guy working behind that. His name's Chris. He graduated last year from Westminster. Um, I don't know if he's here. He's right oh, he's right at the back, yeah. Um, so thank you very much, Chris. Uh, but so, yeah, uwsu.com. Um, get online. Uh, we also have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. So, yeah. Um, so, the second goal that we have is we want to create a greater sense of community on campus. Um, so, this is something that we've done in various different ways. Um, as I said before, we did have We Are Westminster, and that was part of that. Um, the idea was as well that we had different events on every campus so everybody felt like there was something that they could get involved in. Um, the events tended to be like slightly tailored either towards what the campus has. So, for example, Regions had a film festival because we've got the cinema as an example of that. Um, or they were more kind of tailored around 
what people study in that campus, so like the Dance and Music Festival being in Harrow, is because there are more music students in Harrow, because that's where music is. Um, and basically we wanted to just start students having discussions around diversity um, and starting to talk about it, because before that, as a university and a union, we kind of said, yes, we're a really diverse university and union, and didn't really do anything about it beyond that. So it's, yeah, starting to get discussions started around that. Um, and just the more you kind of discuss diversity, the much more you learn, and it's really interesting. Um, we've also done it through social spaces, because that is the place where people get to know one another um, and can socialise on campus, so it's really important to have it. Um, so as Usman had said, we do now have a social space on the Cavendish campus, which it hadn't had before, um, and Regents has been revamped. The loft is now here as kind of an extra kind of event space in Harrow, but it can be used for anything, so it can be used for something like this, it can be used for a band, it can be used for um, a show or a performance. Um, it's a flexible space that students can use. Um, and we've also been having discussions when we've um, been putting into the space report what we want as a union and what we think you want as students. So uh, Jim have been discussing about having kitchen spaces on every campus so you can have access to things like microwaves and kettles that just seems some basic, but we don't have access to any of them. Um, Sals has been in discussion about having a social space on Marlebon that is dedicated to purely being a social space instead of places like the learning platform becoming a social space because there's nowhere else to go. Um, the SU also has permanent locations on every campus now, so that means that wherever you are, you can come and find someone from the SU and there will be someone there to help you. Um, we all have an office and there is also an office in the Well Street building on Regents as well. So you can kind of be able to come and see us anytime and we're really easy to access. And we also want to, around social space, consult with you guys more. Um, so when we were doing up the Regent Street space, we had a survey open for students to tell us what they actually wanted that space to look like and how they wanted it to be used. Um, and when we are creating new spaces on campus, we want to continue to do that and continue to discuss with you so you get social spaces that you actually want to use. Um, again, we have Madia, who's been creating more academic societies. And in terms of creating a sense of community, you come to university for your course. So having a society that is based around your course to support you with any issues that you might be having, um, any like revision questions that you've got or anything like that, or just kind of extra things that to add into your course. So like um, going on trips that are relevant to modules that you're doing and things like that. That's what academic societies are really good for. And if you create a network with an academic society, you then have friends in your course as well. So it's really good to get involved in them if you're not already. Um, and if your course doesn't have an academic society yet, come and chat to us and we can start getting it moving. We can find someone who wants to be the president of that and create an academic society for it. Um, we have been goaling every week and the idea of goaling as well is that you guys get to know us more as your SABs. You see us around, you feel like you can chat to us. Um, we are really friendly, so even if we're not goaling, come and have a chat to us anyway because um, we're more than happy to hear from you. But goaling is where we're like specifically going out to come and talk to you guys. And also the presidents, captains, student staff and student media all went on a residential at the start of this year. Um, it was to train them so that they have a better understanding of kind of what they can and can't do, um, but also like how to use the union to their advantage. But as a result of that as well, it's created really good connections between them all. And we've had more collaborative events this year than we've had before. So an example of that is Maroween, where we had six societies come together to create a massive event that raised nearly £1,000 for the Anthony Nolan Society. Um, so that's really great that societies are starting to do that. And we want to work more to make them connections even stronger between the societies and everybody. So goal three is we want to make sure that you have a good quality university experience. And what does that really mean? Well, a big focus is employability, and that's something as a union we're really focusing on. What would I do with that, Salsa, honestly? What would I do? <laughs> um, so it's about employability. We're trying to create – we're creating – we've created a strand called Career Links. Um, we, are, we are looking to recruit um, a an employability and enterprise coordinator – uh, to focus on opportunities to make you more employable and to get that out there. That's part of the activities team um, uh, launching that. 
Um, we've recruited an extra welfare advisor. We understand that as students, you, we all go through various issues, concerns, problems, whether that's from home, various issues. And we felt that we wanted to support you more by hiring an extra welfare advisor so you can... Um, you, are, you can go to any campus and get that free impartial, you can get sort of impartial advice um, because we are separate from the university. Um, we're making sure that course reps are more trained this year. Um, so, course reps, how was your experience? Uh, what's going on? <laughs> Have you just woken up, honestly? How was your experience? <laughs> oh, honestly, you do this to me. Oh. But, no, no honestly... Um, We've really equipped, the, we, this year we've really went hard with the course reps. So last year we only had uh, four training sessions across the university. And this year we've, tra- we've trained over 300 course reps. From 780, yeah. From 780. 780. 780, okay. Um, and that's been really helpful because we've also, some running four sessions a year, we've, we've, run, we've run 12. We've equipped you with skills to understand that you can, you, if you've got a student body around you where you can, you can mobilise and take action. If you're not happy with something in your course, you can really change that a great deal. Um, we've equipped you with employability sessions and sort of tr- workshops, campaigning, um, sort of debating. And we're bringing professionals in to sort of, sort of get, guide you on how you can do that and how you can sort of to empower you to sort of be the best that you can be and really make a change in your course as a course rep. Uh, we're being more critical of the university this year. Um, this means that we're working closely with the university on projects that they're doing, um, improving personal tutoring, um, developing social space. Also, along with that, um, we're looking at student views on issues around, st- stu- uh, around swipe and engage. Um, some students liked it, some students did not, did not like it. We've taken that on board. Um, and we're not always just pointing negative, but we're also saying to the university where they're doing well so they can carry on um, good work. Um, also, if you're a first, second year, you're going to get a, a hair report at, when you graduate. Here is the higher, um, higher, education. higher education achievement record, um, which you'll get um, with, your, with your degree transcript, which will give you a list of everything that you've done at your time at university. So it's formally recognised. So if you were a course rep, a society president, a fan, a, a sports captain, um, if you're part of student media, you'll get recognised on that, which will be a formal document which you can show employers, uh, which will be given to you. So it's really about equipping you to get the best experience that you can from from that. So that's me. Thank you. And I'll pass over to Sassabel. <laughs> um, I won't bore you with the financial bits, but um, it's to support Jim's uh, manifesto point of increasing SU transparency. So um, we want to make sure students in, in the University of Westminster Student Union um, are capable to be your student union. Um, we are working on making ourselves financially stable through our commercial stand, and this year we made £22,000 through sponsorship and advertising at over, um, over the Freshers Fair to put back into the student experience. We also got £6,000 worth of freebies to give away. We are working for societies to get more sponsorship deals so they can, lar- they can run large events, and we are looking at new account systems to be in place for the current year. Um, we are also making sure that the CEO of the uh, UWSC <laughs> and your sabbatical team are more accountable through monthly reports and scrutiny panels. We're also making sure we have a priority on staff training so that we can deliver the best service to you. And if you have any questions about those, um, this is uh, your chance. Yeah, guys, so we'll be opening up to questions. Um, before we go into this kind of open floor questions, there are like two policies we wanted to chat to you about. Um, so one of them's Three. Sorry, I lied. I missed a page. (coughs) So the first is scrutiny panel, um, which I'll take. So then liberation officers, which Lauren will discuss. And finally, it's SSAs, uh, student site associations, or site student associations, uh, which Otis will cover. And Salsa. And and Salsa, sorry. Um, So with the scrutiny panel, um, first of all, my first idea was to like create a student council, so something like this, where the union could pass policy. So it would be that you could, for example, like say a SAB isn't doing a very good job, wasn't showing up to office, then you could raise it there and there could be some sort of action taken, which has been like an issue in the past. Um, alternatively, if, for example, you wanted the union, I don't know, to take a, 
a stance against Israel like the US is doing, for example, then, then they could pass a motion there or something like that. So that's something we're looking into and developing, but we, we think we're probably going to be able to do for the NUS because we looked at other models. And the problem with student councils is they tend not to get attendance. People tend to show up for like a month or two, and after that it tails off. And if you make any policy contingent on it being passed by the council, you get to a situation where you can't pass policy. So West London couldn't create societies because the council had to sign off societies before they could exist. So there are problems there. Um, but what West London have replaced it with, and, and this model we're going to try, is with a scrutiny panel. So the idea of this is that once a month uh, it would meet um, and be able to scrutinise SAB. So you look through our reports and you'll be able to kind of have a word with us about what we've done, uh, scrutinise us and censure us if, if you think we haven't been doing our jobs or like, commend us if you think we haven't been doing our job particularly well. Um, and the way that that would be made up would be um, of five course reps, uh, three side presidents, one captain, two randomly selected students, um, and then the four liberation officers would also be scrutinised as part of that. So they're elected officers um, as well, but, but by their caucus groups. Um, yeah, exactly. So they'd be meeting once, what, once a month is really the idea. So I, I just want to know what you thought. Um, the way selection would work is because kind of elections again, would anyone who's interested would put their like name into a hat and then we'd pick up the names at random and then those randomly selected would be the ones who do the job. So it wouldn't be elected, it would be like random chance um, because then you've got democracy by people who want to scrutinise kind of countering that. So I just wonder what your thoughts were uh, on that. If anyone had comments, questions? I have a question. Yeah. Sure. If you, if you do it over the, with the hat system where random chance is mm. given, how can you ensure that there's leadership quality in that? Because it's a sensitive area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do, yeah, um, do, yeah, sure. Um, so... First of all, if people want to put themselves forward, uh, then that's enough. But if you're running a society, if you're a course representative, you already, in my view, have leadership quality. That, that's what you've done. The idea of getting two randomly selected students is because there are people who aren't engaged with the union who we'd actually quite like to have input into the union and what it's doing, um, so they can ask questions. Um, but with 15 people, I would hope that there'd be enough people within the 15 of Westminster students who, who would have those leadership qualities. But at the end of the day, uh, they would have a vote on whether to censure SAB, for example. And we'd say something like three censures, so three months where they haven't done their job, triggers an automatic by-election. So you're out of office and then re-elected would be the idea. So you've just got to trust the chance there. But there's no guarantee ever. You can interview and mess up the interviews. You can elect bad people. Like No, no system's perfect, but it's the best one we could think of, um, if I answer your question. Anyone else? In which case, I will pass off to Lauren. I'll, I'll, I'll get that done, make it happen. Um, and, and Lauren will go on to the liberation officers. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we've been running elections over the course of this week, and some of them elections were for four liberation officer roles. So the four liberation officers that we're going to elect um, are a BAME officer. That stands for Black, Asian and Minority Ethnic. A women's officer an LGBTI plus officer and a disabled officer. Um, so the idea with these officers is that they tackle issues that are specific to their group, um, so to their minority group, and they're there purely to represent that group and run campaigns um, or discuss issues or bring issues to us to take to boards and things like that that are specific to that group. Um, and they should be meeting about once a month with people from their caucus group. A caucus group is other people who self-identify to that liberation movement. So, for example, I'm a woman, so I could self-identify into the women's um, liberation movement. And with that, we wanted to kind of, in a caucus group, it's there so that there's safe space and that people, everyone feels like they can discuss their issues openly in that space, and then they will be taken on by the um, officer to kind of push them forward further. Um, these roles have been, um, if you guys have voted this week, you'll notice that these, at the beginning of voting, you were asked to like self-identify to these groups. It's so that the people who are elected are elected by other people who self-identify to that, um, and that there's kind of that continuation of their caucus group has put them into that place. Um, but if you don't self-identify to that group but you do still feel strongly about the issues that people are campaigning on or running events about, that doesn't mean that you can't be involved in it. You can be there to be an ally to these groups um, and support their movements. So if they are signing a petition and they, need, they want other students to sign, then you're free to sign that. That's completely fine. It's just the caucus groups that tend to be kept to kind of people who self-identify to that group. Um, we've run it like this this time because it's the model that NUS uses and most other student unions use. Um, 
but we want to open it up and discuss with you guys and um, what you think about that do you feel like it's a system that's worked do you have any questions about it anything like that so does anyone have any questions Yeah. <laughs> um, just a quick question was, um, you know, B-A-M-E. Yeah. Um, is that based on a model used somewhere else? Because I was always thinking it seems kind of strange grouping everyone there together. Like there's not just a black and an um, ethnically uh, minor thing. It's just all black, Asian, minority, ethnics. Uh, yeah. It's just it, one group. It's... Um, it is tend to be just one officer to support all of those groups um, together in kind of a standard NUS kind of model. Um, but do you feel like there'd maybe need to be scope for more officers around that? Because the idea with these officers are we start off with the four, but we could kind of branch out into other areas that students feel like a liberation officer would need to be in place for. So do you feel like there'd need to be separate ones for each group or...? Well, I don't have any experience in this, but um, I did think that that could be split up into a few more groups. Yeah. Okay. Maybe four, one for each letter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, that's something that we can look at. And it as well will be a case of um, once we start working with this, um, with this position, then we can start working out whether that is too big of a workload and whether we do need to split it up as well. Um, and in discussion with the officer and with students who were in the caucus group too. So, but it's good to know as well. Um, and when we review them next year, we can have a look at that and see if it needs to be broken down at the fall. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. It's best for the mic. So yeah. <laughs> the video can pick it up. Um, do you not think that having a category for women is a little bit behind the times? Um, there's still kind of issues around gender equality, I think. Um, so obviously we've had issues in, like, pay not being equal for women and things like that, or not as many women are in high kind of management positions and things like that. So um, despite the fact that there has kind of, like, been a lot of movement around that, it's about continuing that and making sure that kind of... Things like um, like consent campaigns and things like that can be run by this officer just to help kind of support women in their areas and... Yeah, push them all to go and be like CEOs and things. <laughs> oh. um, she's not got a good voice, so she's asked me to ask it for her. Yeah. What is your suggestion for making people aware of this new initiative? Because so many people don't have access to this initiative uh, to these initiatives. And that's something that some students have already expressed to me that they are not aware of. Um, okay, um, so once we've got the officers in place, it will be a lot about them working with um, comms and creating them kind of caucus groups and going out and talking to students as well. Um, but it can be something that we can be pushing through, like goaling, we can be suggesting to students that they feel strongly on issues that they can go and join in caucus groups or they can go to events as well if they are running events and campaigns it will be promoted like any of our campaigns or any of our events would be um yeah um i i i'd add to that um for these elections we fly it heavily uh, they're posted up everywhere we use social media um uh, you'll you'll hear later how many people turn out to this election um so you know the national average for turnout in su elections is 15 percent uh, last year, 3,100 people voted for, for our positions, which is the national average. Um, so in that sense, turnout's hard to get, but, but we do do everything we can within our power. We now have all students' uh, emails, so we can email uh, there about elections, which we did. Everyone got a code. Um, so it's very difficult for us to do much more than that. Um, but now you're all here. Maybe you can spread the word for us. That, 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 yeah. that, that would help. Was there another question? Yeah. Um, with this election, especially for the liberation officers, the problem um, might not be the turnout and the advertising of the officers, um, but more getting more people to stand for those roles. Yeah. How would you encourage that? It's, it's easy to get people to vote, but it's harder to encourage and get that confidence for people to stand for them. Yeah, and I think with them being brand new roles... Um, it is very difficult to step into a role where nobody's being before you and not really having anything to kind of work off or like a handover and being the person to start it all. 
um, which is why I think we've probably had less people standing for these roles. But hopefully after they've had a year um, in office of being in these roles and people start to see the changes that they can make um, and that they will make as well, that will give people more confidence in these Liberation Officer roles and to stand and to think, I can see that, but there's still more work to be done on that campaign and I'd like to be the person to continue it. Um, which hopefully is the idea that they will build and they will build kind of people who want to step into the roles behind them. And, and, and the only thing I'd add to that is that we are building leadership within the entire union. So there's more training for society presidents. We've got course reps here who are being trained more than ever. I hope all of you at least consider running for election either for sabbatical positions in, in, in January or, or following years, all these positions in the future. And as those caucus groups develop, as Lauren already said, more. Develop more people. Hmm. Yeah. Is there any more questions? <laughs> no? Oh, yeah. Um, I've got one more question. Yeah? Obvious. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, I notice a lot of the time you've got uh, academic societies for specific um, uh, degrees, for specific courses. Yeah. Um, but the academic society isn't as active or as proactive as they could be, should be, however you want to say it. Um, but then you've got the issue of not being able to start like a parallel academic society for the same thing because the union has this rule that, you know, if there's a BMS society, for example, you can't go make your own BMS society. Uh, so how would you address that? Um, yeah. If you want to tear that up, yeah, and I'll add to it, yeah. Well, we, we had this issue three weeks ago, actually, with an international relations society and the international development society. So... We don't want to create tension between our student groups. Uh, that was just going to lead to open conflict, political clashes between groups. We don't want that. Um, but we would encourage you to get involved with it, and all societies should be open to their members to get involved and to decide on the future of that society. Now, if the leadership of society is not doing that, come to speak to the activities team. You've got Andy Morwood in here uh, somewhere, uh, who's waving, so over there him uh, so speak to him speak to Andita and, and say you know I suggested this idea it's not been taken on board what can I do and, and then you can get some advice about the viability of starting a different society or about ways of perhaps having reselection within a society if the leadership isn't doing anything uh, for its members um, yeah as well you can if you're not happy with the way your academic society is working you can put in a complaint through the website about the society so that we're aware of it um, but as well if you want to change society Go and really get involved in it. That's the best way to change it. Yep. Any more before we move on to the next policy thing? No? Okay, so the next thing is uh, SSAs. Um, and myself and Salisbury will talk about these, uh, which we haven't actually used this year. Um, I was involved in SSAs for two weeks. Um, Salisbury was the head of the SSAs. So... Uh, we're, we're talking upon experience. Um, the SSAs, initially the concept of them was to represent their whole campus, so there'll be a separate SSA for each, a separate group of students for each campus. Uh, they were unpaid roles, um, and they were to represent uh, their campus through campaigns, so for instance liberation campaigns, uh, as well as acting as a welfare service instead of purely uh, just running events. Uh, we had a lot of feedback, uh, and, and they apparently were very cliquey, and uh, they were very close with their sabbatical officer, which is great, um, but that kind of took away uh, the sabbatical officer reaching out to the sports teams uh, and, and then the societies um, and the media groups. Uh, so as a team, we decided they were not succeeding in their mission, um, so we decided not to use them this year, and we decided to really focus with engaging with uh, the society presidents, sports captains, course reps, fans, and with student media. So, um, SSA stands for Site Student Association. Um, they were literally a group of students that would help, but um, we wanted to work more with those who are leaders as they have a network with a group of students and it would give them a, vi a wider, more varied student perspective when making decisions and as well as building a, built a bigger community within the student union. Um, it is also meant to be given power to student leaders um, to develop their decision-making skills as an individual and therefore we have decided to not recruit SSAs this year and use these groups to help with events and campaign acts. Students can also get involved in focus groups such as Employability Month and Sustainability Focus 
focus group which contain um, students from these areas um, but are open to all students and this means that students can get involved in specific specific areas of uh, interest. Um, this also means um, a, a, face, a problem we faced um, as an ex-head head SSA um, uh, I faced an issue with the other SS, fellow SSAs where um, at one point of their term they would be more busier so that means they wouldn't have more time they wouldn't have the interest or the motivation to do so so we're just stuck to, with the same group throughout the whole year but what we're doing now is giving you a chance to for more students to get involved in uh, maybe the beginning of the year they've got more time maybe some other people have more time in the end of the year to get involved in stuff like this so it just gives you um, so it just gives the students a different face um, for each event and for each campaign we need to put up. Um, so I think we've done the right decision. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone in final year or second year that have seen the SSAs around? <laughs> Has anyone got any questions um, about it? <laughs> Um, so I was uh, co-head of Regions SSAs last year, um, and I got involved because the first year in Regions, they were absolutely fantastic. Like, um, they put on so many events, and it really was, like, diverse, um, and the events we had were diverse themselves, and they were really successful. The second year is definitely, like, what that feedback came from. It was too clicky. There were certain events that were only support, like, supported by about two members of the team, but they'd still go ahead. Um, so I think there's definitely like something within it that's really good to promote. Um, but as I said, like as you said, it, the second year they kind of all just went off a little bit. But the first year was so successful and so like really good. Like they did definitely delivered on the first year. Um, it's not really a question; it's just a comment because I did see them and I was involved. Uh, the only thing I could say to that as well is what we're trying to replace them with is the idea is to get a new tab on the website and Chris needs some ideas of what will be on there before it can be populated. But it will be to have like all the projects we're working on, so Employability Month next February, We Are Westminster Month, which was uh, just finished in November, um, and, and other projects as well. So if we, for example, want to... Uh, uh, the awards ball, so planning the awards ball, things like that. And the idea would be that you could sign up to like a mailing list for any of those groups. And then there'd be like meetings every two weeks you could go to if you wanted to, if you had the time. And then you could pick a mix and get involved with any project you wanted to on a kind of want-to-know basis. And that opens it up then to all 23,000 students instead of cliques, but also then allows engagement with projects. So that's the idea. So if you've got any comments on that, but, but, but that was our solution to, to try to maintain that involvement. What does SSA stand for? Site Student Association. Student Site Association. Flip it and reverse. I was SSA for two years, Steph. <laughs> um, do, do you think it would be worth looking into um, ma making a, a new, more systematic um, system of, of volunteers? That the SSA, as uh, Steph said, worked well in the, the first year, but it ended up kind of uh, that the SSAs were kind of doing the, the VP's job for them. Uh, do, do, do you think that, that, that hear me out, do, do you think that there, there could be a, a more um, like efficient system of, of like volunteer schemes put in place by the SU? Um, do you want me to answer, Osman? <laughs> Personally, I, I'm, I'm student staff. Um, so I don't volunteer, but I do think that there could be a system, you know, like ahead of like promotion staff that for more uh, volunteers to kind of get active and, and uh, do more than just promoting the SU, kind of actually actively go out and, and uh, talk to students about what they think about the SU. Yep, um, I, agree, I agree with you. I think there's more we can do. Um, I think with the essays in the first year, they were good. And unfortunately, secondly, it, did, it didn't go as uh, well. Um, I think we've kind of opened up opportunities to get involved in employability month in um, various campaigns that we're doing. 
um, so the awards board, as Jim has mentioned. I think we can do, I do agree, we can do more to formalise it. I think it's a matter of, we need to sort of formalise how we can get involved as a student and you can kind of, as you can pick and mix, but I think it's a matter of formalising what that is. And I think, yeah, we, we, need, we are going to create a, a scheme of some sort where we can formalise it, where you can go to the website, click on it, and you can sort of see, as Jim was mentioned. So I do, I do 100% do agree with you, and we will be doing more for, more for, for that. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing I'd, uh, I'd say to add is it's, it's very hard to to find volunteers by just asking, like, do you fancy volunteering for question mark? Because it's just very hard to sell it like to, to people. So typically I've found the people that are most likely to engage with the project are, are, are course reps, society presidents, people involved with society already engaged. There's, there's 6,500 students that are already engaged. The other 18,000 uh, are, are the people we should try to reach out to. So hopefully awareness of a tab where they can sign up and, and more events and publicising those events and then having shout-outs about that system will be the route we have. Others, we end up with a database of volunteers, which is already established, and again, it risks becoming cliquey and stuff, but certainly something we should look into. And, and your feedback will be helped. We should definitely email us or something. Any other questions? Yeah? Um, can I just say... As a general comment on what you said about getting people involved, um, most people in the uni come and go as complete tourists. Like they come in, they get what they have to get to study, go home, study like maniacs on their laptops. And that, that's about it. They don't get really involved. The thing is, because I've had this conversation uh, with job recruiters from big firms actually, like uh, Ernst & Young and Deloitte, um, they've all told me that people that get involved in the universities always have a bigger advantage when they are selected for a job. So maybe if you try to push that aspect towards students, maybe you could get some more people involved. Like, this would be important for your CV. That's all. So um, in the beginning of the year, we spoke to nearly 6,500 students with a presentation of what we do and the incentives behind it. One of the main incentives are the HIR, the Higher Education Achievement Record, that you get as a transcript when you graduate, separate certificate uh, when you graduate, which makes you more employable um, and your transferable skills that you learn through university. Um, if there are ways that you could suggest to me or to the fellow subs on how to actually attract more students in, because... Um, we are trying our best and we try to advertise it as much. So if you have any idea of anything extra that maybe we miss out the, on the point or maybe we're not doing or trying, um, then let us know so we can do it and get people. Doing the best job, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so... I do try and um, advertise it. Like in the induction talks, I've had a lot of postgraduate students and um, a lot of students that are international students coming into my office on a daily basis asking, can I join this, can I join that, and can I join this? We just need to make it as an easier process, in, um, especially with timetable clashes. And once we get a social space in Marlborough, you won't be going home. <laughs> That's a great point. Just a point to add, um, I think it's, also, it's about getting involved. And I think... We, we did. We had an international talk, which was really fun. We got. I, I, I got a laugh, which I was impressed by. <laughs> the audience had a laugh, which I'm not. I had that happens to me once a year. Um, but I think it's really. We, we want to make awareness that if you're a course rep, if you're a fan, that you've got involved. You've really taken a step to just get involved. And sometimes as students, you don't realise that, oh, I'm just part of a society, I'm part of a sports team, I train once a week or twice a week. It really says a lot to an employer that you've taken a step to join the site, you'll be part of a committee or a fan or a part-time role. And it's really understanding the value that you bring to an employer and really kind of selling that, I think. And sometimes students, I, even when I was a student, it was kind of underplaying that or putting it to the side, saying it was just, I just wanted, or wanted some kind of final activities to meet people. But it does set you apart. And I think sometimes that's what we need to maybe more shout about a bit more. To follow on from that as well... Um, we really appreciate you all getting involved as well because it's great that we have you guys to bounce ideas off in forums like this. So it's just as well to say thank you to everyone for getting involved. Um, I was going to say thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? questions? Any general questions? Yeah, about anything. <laughs> Well, actually, it's not a question, but 
um, I'm an MA student, for example, and so far I regret to say that I, I haven't seen something like a separate program or maybe a separate induction for MA students. So I'm studying, me and my course mates, we're studying for one year. And again, I regret to say that all those, let's say, terms that you mentioned till now, some of those, we are not quite familiar because we are staying in the university one year. Maybe for the next years, the next coming years, you could make some other kind of induction separate from MA students who are going to stay one year and all the others maybe who are staying in the university for three years, bachelor studies, or I, I don't know. Because um, personally, like, we, we don't feel like quite representative, representing, like, representative in the, in the board. Yeah. I know you're going to say something. <laughs> um, do you know the next step for me as a sabbatical officer is to create a um, postgraduate student society? And then from that, we can work with the postgraduate tutors on each campus and organize um, things for you uh, that is only within that year. Because I know you miss out on a lot of things that you could be doing if you weren't a postgraduate student. I feel it's unfair because um, for you to actually carry on in education and stay on for another year, that takes a lot of <laughs> guts and strength. So um, um, hopefully by ne my next semester there will be a postgraduate student society and there we'll gather all the students together and encourage you to get, get together uh, the only other thing i'd add to that as well is that the subvention bid um so we asked the university for money once a year um then that starts to get made from kind of january onwards um so one of the suggestions feeding into that the vice chancellor is very interested in engaging postgraduate students much more so the university is definitely very interested in that so there might be scope there to have for example a postgraduate uh, officer or a postgraduate kind of coordinator who works on just promoting opportunities and a network in, in, in postgraduate students. So that's something we'll definitely look at and, and take, take away from this. So thanks. As a question as well to you guys, um, a postgraduate officer was one of the other roles that we had looked at as liberation officers and somewhere that we could move into. Um, so just a question to postgraduate students. Do you feel it'd be more benefit to have an officer who's elected in the role to represent postgraduate students um, and employed um, postgraduate coordinator who would be maybe working maybe 20 hours a week just purely to make networks in the postgraduate community um, or just having the society on its own? Mm. As a question to you guys. <laughs> so. I have the mic, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I think that it would be great because if... Um, a postgrad uh, student would rep represent us. He knows much more about our circumstances yep. and uh, knows about our uh, demands, not just uh, from, from the university, but from our private lives as well, because it has the same one. So I, I would definitely suggest this. All right, Tom. Uh, I don't need a mic. I'm sure you guys can all hear me. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the cameras. I think, I think it would be more important to have like a society of postgraduate students in there yeah. as opposed to one single representative. Because you've got different uh, degree programs, obviously, and you've got people who come from different professions who are mm -hmm. also part of the postgraduate yeah. program. However, there are not that many people who have enough experience in the postgraduate program who can be part of a council like that. So you are looking at a small pool. Mm -hmm. And in a small pool like that, you need to have a society, not just one person. Because there are a lot of other leadership aspects that come into play. Yeah. It's my suggestion. Uh, and, and, and just a question directly to you. With a society with people changing every year, do you think continuity might be hard? Do you think having someone who's employed 20 hours a week to make sure it happens and continues year on year on year and is maintained would be necessary or, or not? I think it would be tough in any case. Hmm. Because we have 200 deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's definitely an, an academic frenzy, but if you have a solid framework mm -hmm. that people can follow, then the continuity aspect gets sorted out itself. So it's just a matter of adapting to that framework. Yeah, exactly. So the challenge lies in creating that framework to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Um, it's not creating, but adapting. For the people to adapt, yes, but yeah, we have to create something. Groundwork. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, no, it's not about that. 
Yeah. Oh, it could be about anything. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, I'm third year fashion, um, if it's possible for the students' union to... We, um, I know last year a lot of money was put into like a catwalk show and something down in the forum that I know our course wasn't happy with at all. Um, we're like the first year to be paying £9,000 fees and obviously on a fashion course we have to cover the, all the extra expenses ourselves. Um, when it gets to final year there are certain, certain things like us putting on a presentation that I think is a I'm putting out like maybe £300 extra so as like basically it's an elitist course where they're saying that if you don't have the funds to be able to fund your final collection and all these extra things you can't you're not going to be finishing your degree and you can't compete with people that obviously have the money to do so so I was wondering if it's possible for you guys one to find out where our money goes and two if we need to make a union so that obviously every course is different but for a design course we need to have a space where we present our work and the last few years Andrew's done a great job with Kettner's and that's where we go in town to be able to have industry to come and see our work. It's been really successful, obviously, as everyone knows, Westminster gets really good jobs in the industry. But we have to pay for that. And I feel that if the, if the university has money to put, you know, 10,000 odd pounds into a huge fashion show event, then can, do they not have a few hundred or a few thousand to be able to help us? Yeah present our work in the way that it should be after we've obviously spent four years, you know, and after coming out of a year of unpaid experience. So I just think it's not fair. It's basically saying if you don't have parents that can fund you, then you can't finish your degree, which I don't think there's any other course which puts that expectation. So I was just wondering if you guys could find out where our money goes and if that's a possibility to be able to do it, because obviously Kettner's really works. So instead of trying to do something different is is the university able to help us in being able to cover those costs um, I, I, I think the short answer is yes uh, absolutely it's worth looking into one thing we've been pushing for this year is uh, showing the hidden costs um, of every degree explicitly um, before you apply so you know it but then and also trying to make uh, amends to limit it so one thing we're working on is for example getting bigger printing credit grants to students who need to print loads so for example if you're doing architecture you need to print a lot more uh, than if you're doing well, I don't know let's say law for example because you can read most stuff like online from the journals there's no, there's no obligation to print stuff out to, to, to present it so it's about challenging those hidden costs and making sure that nine grand is spent effectively to you and, and making sure that there's support available for those students that need it so yeah that's something I'll raise I'll look up and I'll see if I can get published on the website as soon as possible where 9k goes we'll take the question um, firstly, um, I'd like to point out a matter before uh, regarding the postgraduate. Um, I'm not a postgraduate myself, but I had an idea. Why not do both? I mean, have a society thing and have a person hired up to do the both. So you, you have the advantage of both things. Regarding the question, um, I was going to ask you know, about your goals, as in the one that you go out and meet people. Have you considered going to society events and going to actual societies and meet people there? We go to as many society events that we can go to. Um, so if one sabbatical officer can't make it to one, the other one can. Um, I know on one day all three of us, or well, three of us were in three different societies. We also, the other day, we went from one event to another at the same time. So we do... Um, try to split ourselves up into ten pieces for you guys. <laughs> uh, what, what, what I would say is sometimes it's hard to know when societies meet, so generally it's because we get invited or, or, or have some personal connection, but if you just drop us an email, which you can find on the SU website, you know, speak to us in person, it's better, but, but if you can't for whatever reason, like drop us a line, and, and, and then we'll definitely try to come there. We're very interested in that. If you'd like access to, and um, this is also to anyone else who's in the society or just wants access to all five of us, um, the best email to send it to mm -hmm. is sabs at SU dot westminster dot ac dot uk um, that way we all get to find out what events are going on we can all put in our calendars and we can all make sure that we're free to attend or if you want to like raise an issue for all five of us to deal with that's the best way to do it also one other issue um 
we had the incident with my course that one of these students um, had an issue with the tutorial that um, basically um, her, one of her family members um, died and she had to go to the funeral, but we had a um, practical presentation. So she sent an email saying, I can't come and blah, blah, blah. Um, by the practical presentation, after the funeral, she ends up coming because, you know, you want to keep your mind busy so you don't have to think. But the tutor kicked her out because she said you already emailed saying you're not coming. So you either do the presentation or you don't stay in. And I didn't know about the whole issue because she took her out and talked to her outside. And I found that kind of rude. And then she told me about this later. But right now, this issue has been resolved, as in they've took her out, she apologized. But my issue is, why do we have such a tutor that responds like this in the beginning? So. Specifics of, of, of cases are, are very hard to know without more details, particularly if it's heard secondhand or, or anything else. What we'd recommend are things like that is making a complaint, we can look into it. Um, but there's numerous reasons, you know, maybe the tutor was really stressed, had an awful day, uh, maybe it was their first ever presentation that they were marking and they had to film it and treble mark it because of other pressures. And it's not okay, um, don't get me wrong, um, but, 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 but I'm saying like there, there might be more complex reasons, but if you launch a complaint, then there's an investigation, there's interviews with everyone who was there, a formal discussion, a conclusion, and then it's emailed back. I mean, that's, that's the only way you can deal with it objectively. Um, just, to, uh, just to add in, um, the tutor could have actually been doing the student a favour because there's a regulation called fit to sit and they might have actually excluded that student because that means that they can then claim, they can claim do the presentation again and do it when they're in a better frame of mind and much more prepared to do it. So there's many reasons why the tutor could be doing it. But what I'd strongly advise with, with cases like this there's always ways that you know there's all sorts of information that's important um if you get them to one of our advice team um so if you go to www.uwsu.com forward slash advice i always advise in these cases that if you're going to have if you're going to need to circumvent the university processes go and talk to one of our team first because they'll hold your hand and they'll guide you through it and it's probably the easiest and best way of doing it Uh, like courses being uh, more connected so I'm a commercial music performance student in my last year and over the past two years I had the impression that we didn't get enough uh, connections with the different courses like uh, for one of my deadlines this year we had to do a music video we had no idea who any of the uh, film students were um, uh, or we're supposed to do photo shoots as well, had no idea who the photography students were. Uh, even for branding for our own uh, musical projects, per possibly talking to the fashion, fashion students who would be more capable of helping us out. Because um, I'm not a fashion student. I don't, I'm don't. i not great with branding. I'm not um, a genius when it comes to like dressing up and stuff. But people who do actually know about this, they I, I haven't been able to talk to them because I don't know who they are. Also, I only found out in third year that there was a PR course which is on this campus and I didn't know about it until this year because I happened to talk to someone who was in the bar and said oh I do PR and uh, yeah it, I thought it was a bit strange that I found that out like that uh, instead of finding it out perhaps in like first year so uh, maybe a suggestion is to like have some modules or free modules that uh, connect the courses like uh, like um, that have the same deadlines or something like film students and music students that have... We, I have a music video deadline, 10th of December. If we both had the same deadline, it might make it more logical for us to work together because um, other people that were making music videos uh, started working with the MA students, um, but the MA students who were doing audio production had deadlines weeks before they had their deadlines, so they started working together and then they said, oh our music's not ready yet, and the other people were like, oh, well, we have to have a deadline by next week. So they couldn't finish the work that they started. So, yeah, if that's a suggestion that could maybe work. just. I think I'll let Lauren speak about Learning Futures, which, which are working on these electives. Um, the other thing is, like, that's why we're trying to build course-based societies. If we told first years, 
about the sort of 200 courses the university offers, no first year would remember it or, or, or take it in. They, they, they barely take in the, the 10 slides we tried to get through in the induction talks, um, unfortunately. Um, but, but, but as we build more of them, hopefully that will give like, obvious access portals and, and emails. Um, yeah. but, but we're learning futures as well. Um, yeah, so something that's starting, uh, so this year's current first years um, and the new first years that will come in next year, they will all be doing something called a learning futures course. Um, so these are new courses that have an element of something called synoptic assessment. So that means bringing together kind of like two different fields. So for example, my course is English literature and creative writing. So I would have a synoptic assessment that would bring both the English literature and the creative writing together. Um, so that can be something that where music and film can be brought together through these assessments. Um, and that hopefully should help to create better links. Um, I would say as well, in terms of for now, obviously, because that's not starting until next academic year, um, it is really good if you can kind of, if you do need something like a music video or something like that, have a look and see what societies are there um, that you can access who might be there to help you because they're always looking and doing projects and things like that. Um, so they are quite a good connection. But hopefully through Learning Futures, we will start to get them more connections between the courses and more collaboration. We're unfortunately going to have to wrap up um, with that question because of time, um, because we need to now annou announce the, the uh, uh, election results. Um, but what I would say is, guys, we have the next conference um, after the, I think, February election. So election nominations open for sabbatical positions next week uh, are then open until uh, January. I think campaigning starts around the 18th of January and then goes on for two weeks. But at the results night, which I think is in about February, I think we have another conference, annual conference, so please come to that. Um, and what I would say apart from that, maybe South's got a few words she, she, she wants to add, but, but, but thanks for me. We're going to end this on a good note. Um, who's from Marlebone here? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have an area, news just in, we have an area called P3. And um, this area is a very large area where they do their fashion week and fashion month and mostly used for commercial use. And I'm sure some of you have done exams down there. Um, it has now been available for students and societies to book through the CEO and myself um, to use for your events, which is uh, Office to Win.